Today, we're going to talk about why Sony needs to get the A9 series right, and they need to get the A9 series right now. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? My name is Ty Turner, former Army combat photographer and creative director here at Flash Film Media. And if this is your first time on this channel, this channel is for content creators like yourself who wanna turn their passion into profit. So let's get started, let's get right into it. And let's talk about the Sony A9 series. With the release of the A9 Mark II, a lot of people are scratching their heads about this particular iteration of the A9. And I think a lot of people fail to realize the goal of the flagship camera for camera manufacturers. So what they did in their strategy has been to enter the market at a prosumer area with mirrorless cameras, getting people comfortable with the idea of the mirrorless cameras. That's why you have the A7 III series, A7 III S, the A7 III R. Both are designed to be very functional. They're designed to be at a somewhat affordable price range, enough to say I'm professional. You don't want it to be too cheap where everybody can afford it. You want it to be at an area where if people who who are making some money from photography would steer that way. But the A9 series is a completely different series. It's aimed at a completely different customer. And you may not be in that area. If you have a A7R, an A7 or A7S, the A9 just may not be for you. And it's oh. Okay. However, that Nikon D series, that Canon 1DX series, and the Sony Alpha A9 series is geared towards a whole different type of photographer. And that may not be you, and that's fine. But there's a few things to consider in order to understand why Sony is taking a jab at that level of photographer. When it comes to cameras, no other product series in their lineup other than their flagship cameras offers the longevity that that particular lineup offers. You have to think about it. The clients who purchase the 1DXs, the D5s, the A9s, they're also looking to purchase really expensive lenses. Really expensive lenses have really big markups. I mean, they're buying $10,000 lenses, $20,000 lenses, $8,000 lenses. The minimum lens they look to purchase is like a 70 to 200. Those guys are also usually the biggest fanboys for that product. Usually those are the guys that are last to leave. 1DX owners from 10 years ago are still hyped about what Canon does. They're not leaving Canon. It takes a lot to get them to leave Canon on top of the fact that they may also own $50,000 in glass. Switching from body to body is not as simple as the average camera user who may have $4,000 in glass, $5,000 in glass. Once you spend that amount on lenses, you're not going nowhere. You're staying put with the manufacturer. Plus subconsciously, when you look at a sports game, at the end of the sports game, when you see the referees come and shake hands, if you are any type of photographer, you're looking at the gear being used during that. For sports photography, subconsciously, or even different events, whenever you see a group of photographers or a lot of guys taking pictures, even if you are a A6500 user, anybody that touches a camera from the bottom to the top, you're looking to see what gear is being used on the sidelines or on camera. So it's kind of like a subconscious endorsement at the same time. I know for me, before I got into photography, that's how I learned about Canon. That's how I learned about Nikon. That's how I learned about the big boys in the game. Watching those guys who are professionals, I also looked at flashes that they use. I also looked at equipment that they use, vests that they wore. It was kind of my way to get a sneak peek into what the pros were doing. Speaking of what the pros are doing, we're going to take a quick break to talk about some contracts that we offer to professionals like yourself to protect your brand. You ask and we deliver 18 sales contracts designed by content creators for content creators. I'm not talking about those one size fit all contracts you find online. These contracts were specifically designed for your industry. Each contract has multiple clauses designed to protect your brand. Things like making sure the client understands that you have the ability to sell unused footage or images to stock sites. We're also releasing our seven brochure style proposal template pack. 
for anyone that wants to improve sales by providing a professional proposal to clients, as well as our proven five-part lead generation email sequence designed to go in code and produce leads that you can turn into new clients. We also included our objection template to help you overcome the most common objections. We offer this as a complete package or individual in an effort to help you turn your passion into profit. Visit flashfromacademy.com. Check out the promo code in the description to save 25%. So back to the subject. Listen, those high-end camera users, those action photography users, action sports, animal watching, somebody commented in the comments in the previous video, but definitely bird watchers, anybody who capture any type of action photography that needs a camera on that level is a specific market that Sony looks to go after. It's very important that they continue to go after that market for a lot of the reasons I already listed. You have to think about these reasons when you're thinking about the A9 and how it's not a fit for you, how you think the upgrades or updates aren't coming as fast as you like or as severe as you like. The 1DX didn't change much throughout the years. I mean, there was some, some years where it had major changes, but it wasn't a significant jump most years. Another thing to think about is these users that use this high-end action photography cameras for work usually buy two. They usually buy name brand glass. So they don't buy the Sigmas. They don't buy the Tamrons. They only buy Canon, Nikon, Sony. So they only buy name brand flashes. They don't buy Godox and all the other stuff that we typically use during our daily shoots. They need something that's made by the manufacturer that millisecond of extra speed they get is worth it to them so they'll spend the extra money plus they're making that money back it makes the decision a lot easier for them they cannot have things that don't work or aren't consistent so they tend to stick with all of the company's brands these clients usually spend fifty thousand dollars within the lifespan of their photography career or more where the average photographer the a7 user is maybe spending close to 10. so even though we're not happy with the changes that are made to the a9 mark ii they understand that they need to target a specific market and this specific slim market is the most important market in all of photography they are the guys that go out and buy the sony grips they're not the guys that buy mackie grips they aren't the guys that's looking to use the cameras for video purposes or shooting music videos they are the guys that's going to be on tv they'll be on the sidelines during nba games so when players fall on them you see sony glass everywhere that is the market they're going after and that demographic or that market or that group of people require features that are different from what you and I typically use on a daily basis. Don't get me wrong, I've shot a lot of sports, a lot of sideline things. I've used A9s, I love them. I've used D5s, I've used 1DXs, I love them for that particular purpose. If I lived in the area where I did that and only that 24 seven, it is a non-negotiable. I would have to have one of those three cameras and all of the gear and accessory by the manufacturer that's built to last, that's built to give me the best speed I can get all the time. It wouldn't be nothing to talk about. However, again, the average person, they're not spending $20,000 for a lens. They're not spending $10,000 for a lens. They're spending $800 for a lens. It may not make all the sense in the world to you before watching this video hopefully after watching this video you get a better understanding of what sony is trying to do and if you learn anything in this video i'm going to ask that you hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up button and i will see you guys in the next video